Hello folks, I'm quite excited because I have a new watch coming. It's on its way. What it is, is, uh, remember the 1970s? I do, only just. I was a kid at the time. Because I was a kid, I was actually saved some of the worst excesses of fashion of the time. You know, flares and collars that were really wide and lapels that were almost as wide as your flares. Uh, but anyway, apart from the odd tank top, I was saved the indignities of remembering the way I looked back then. But I was still quite interested when Tissot brought out their PRX. Now, they brought that out in 2021, and it's a reissue of a watch from 1978. Now, back in 1978, I wouldn't really have been interested in the PRX. At that time, I was sort of more interested in Casio's with musical alarms. Although I did have a Rolex AD in my local town, and I was familiar with the Oyster Quartz range. More of that in a minute. Anyway, I was really, the grown-up me was actually very interested in the PRX. But at £295 and being the cheap watch chap, I think it's a little bit rich for me, just to scratch an itch. Anyway, the itch got itchier. Uh, the Timeless Watch Channel recently did a video where he had an AP Royal Oak chronograph that he'd just bought. Absolutely stunning. I mean, some of this is down to his photography. It's just amazing. You want to check out the Timeless Watch Channel. Even the AP's box is one of the most beautiful things I've ever seen. Dark green lacquered wood. Just lovely. Anyway, it's the style rather than the PRX that I'm interested in. So what we're breaking it down to is like a sort of geometric case design steel. And, well, gold ones as well, I suppose. Uh, and sort of engineered look with an integral bracelet. So... Casting around what other things are available, uh, I did a wee bit of research and I found all about Gerald Genta. Now, Gerald Genta was a very influential designer who was active in the time of wide lapels. And Genta was responsible for a number of designs that have carried forward into the present day. The Audemars PK Royal Oak, uh, that I just mentioned from the Timeless Watch Channel, and also the AP, uh, sorry, not the AP, the Patek Philippe Nautilus. Now, these watches have more than stood the test of time. These designs uh, fetch more money now than, well, it makes Rolex's offerings look for, like something you pick up at the petrol station when you're buying sweets. Mr. Genta designed the, the Royal Oak and the Nautilus, but have a look at this. This is a Rolex Oyster Quartz, and it looks more than a little Genta-esque, doesn't it? It wasn't designed by Gerald Genta, however. This was a Rolex in-house design. It came out in 1977. And it's making me sort of wonder the horror of finding out that Rolex would stoop to producing homage watches or copying someone else's design. But the truth isn't quite as black and white as that. I want to show you this watch here. Now, this watch came out in 1970, and Gerald Agenta was uh, commissioned by Rolex to produce a design for a watch whose new movement, which was not a Rolex in-house movement as such, wouldn't fit existing Oyster cases. And he came up with this, and the watch was the first quartz watch ever offered by Rolex, uh, which acquired the moniker the Texan. Now, it was only produced for two years and only a thousand watches were made. They were eye-wateringly expensive and that's how it got the name the Texan. The, the saying was you'd have to be a Texan oil millionaire to be able to afford one. They didn't carry this design onto the Rolex Oyster Quartzes in 1977, but you can clearly see design cues following on. Uh, so they had paid Mr. Genta for his design and strong elements of it were carried forward. But I do think it's a bit cheeky of them because that bracelet on the Oyster, the Oyster Quartz dates uh, is just straight off a Royal Oak. The Royal Oak 5402 came out at the Basel Watch Fair in 1972 and it was a shocker. This 39mm case is only seven millimetres thick and uh, took the world by storm. 
It's still a very successful popular design even to this day and it's only a two-hander. But you know, for something as lovely as this, I could forgo the vulgarity of a second's complication. Well, maybe in my dreams. My wildest, wildest dreams, because I don't think I have the pocket for this. Anyway, I digress. I'm not in that ballpark. I'm nowhere near that ballpark. However, our friends in the Chinese homage industry were able to come riding to the rescue here. I had a look around to see what was available, and the choice, if I wanted a chronograph, came down to, uh, for me anyway, the Cadison chronograph here, and the Pagani design, my old friends at Pagani design, this is rapidly turning into the Pagani channel, but anyway, the, the Pagani design. Now, both of these have VK63 movements. I've already got a watch with a VK63 movement. They're absolutely excellent. I think it's just a fantastic idea to have a quartz watch that lasts with a really long battery life, that has a, a mechanical... Uh, the impression of a mechanical movement when the stopwatch is running. I just think these are great and they're made by Seiko. So you, you've got this quality built in already. Anyway, there were other options and I was nearly seduced. Cadison have a watch. Cadison's watch is has a meteorite style face. Now I'm pretty sure it's not real meteorite. At this price point, I don't think you're going to get a real slice of, a slice of heaven on your wrist. But uh, there were also cheaper options. There was this one from Bersigar and also Benyar. Now, the Bersigar and Benyar product photos are very, very similar, although uh, Benyar is a little bit more comprehensive. And you can see it has, unfortunately, well, it looks like an alloy case, but it's not so much that. It has a folded bracelet. And although it captures the look perfectly, it's not a chronograph, of course, it's, uh, you, you know, it's a three-hander. Although it captures the look perfectly, eh, I don't think the feel would please me. So I prefer a bit of solidity about the watches and I don't like folded steel bracelets as a rule. So anyway, I opted for the Pagani because I prefer slightly the case shape. I think it's also slightly narrower. It's uh, it's a 40 millimeter watch. I think the Cadison's a 42 millimeter watch. Uh, I have a seven and a little bit wrist, so I've not got a massive big gorilla like wrist. So this is a good option for me. Anyway, it's on its way from the People's Republic. And when I get it in, I will unbox it for you and we'll have a wee look at it. Until then, bye for now.